Now, um, I wanted to mention, this, these are all correct ways now to write these. However, there's other correct ways too. I think this is maybe the best way, but you might see people write it a different way. For example, instead of saying that um, one milligram is 10 to the negative three grams, you could say there's 1,000 milligrams in a gram. Those are two ways of saying the same thing. You could say there's 1,000 milligrams in a gram. We didn't say that because that's not what the table is designed to say. Um, but if that was apparent to you, you could have just used that. Um, so the same will do here. You could have said that there's a billion nanometers in a meter. That would be another correct way to write this. Um, or we could have said that there's a million micrometers in a meter. So, uh, but I think these are the most useful approaches because those are the one, these are the ones that match the table. When it says 10 to the negative 6, do you go to the left or the right? 10 to the negative 6 means moving the decimal place to the left. That's right. So, if I was going to figure out, how, if I was going to write 10 to the negative 6, I would write it like this. I would start with the number 1, with the decimal place over here. And now I would move it 6 places to the left. Why do you one. start with the number 1? Well, one. 10 to the negative 6 is really 1 times 10 to the negative 6, right? It's always legal to put a 1 in front of something. Well, that's why it makes sense to start with the number 1. And I start with the decimal place over here, because this is like the, um, the, the normal starting place for a decimal point. And now I move it six places to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, which gives me five zeros. So I have a decimal point, and then five zeros, and then the number one. And this is how you would write 10 to the negative 6 if you wanted to write like a straightforward number. Let me rewrite this one more time so it's easier to see it. So it turned out to be 0. 0.000001. Notice that there's only five zeros to the right of the decimal point, even though we moved the decimal place six places. That's a common mistake, because the first time we moved it, we were just moving around the number one. Right. Also, something that confuses people a lot is that in the textbook, this would be written like this. It's just a matter of taste whether you put a zero to the left of the decimal point. In the textbook, they do this, but these are the same number. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's something else um, that if you want to, we can spend more time reviewing. Scientific notation is also going to be crucial um, throughout the course, so it's important to be comfortable with that. Uh, but this is the basic idea of what this negative exponent means. Okay. okay. Um, and this, uh, so this is telling us that one micrometer is a millionth of a meter. But another way of putting that is that one meter is a million micrometers. Both of those are, are legal ways to put the same thing. Okay. Um, Okay. Okay, well, let's do one realistic unit conversion problem and then we'll go on to the kinematics. Do you have your textbook with you? Mm -hmm. It's on the top of page five. You can look at this example, maybe uh, try to cover up the explanation with a piece of paper and see if you can do this problem. Possibly is, but that wouldn't be given to you on the test. So we should see how to okay. do this just using the stuff on the inside front cover. That's so the material that you would be given on the test. It says 65 miles per hour. Oh, thank you. Uh -huh. Oh, that's what I have on the board, right? Oh, but you have, you have that, the high, right. Yeah. So this should be um, high. Okay, so first I'm going to solve for the miles. So I'll put miles on the bottom. Um, okay. And I want to convert to meters. How many miles are in a meter? Um, well, see, I don't have that in my book, but I do have miles into kilometers. 
right. kilometers. So I could do um, 65 miles. Okay, and then so one mile equals 1.60934 kilometers. And then now I'm going to cancel the kilometers. I think this is as much uh, precision as we need. 1.609, is that what you wrote down? Oh, they have, uh, why does your book have more precision than mine? Okay. It has kilometers. Oh, yeah, I'm just getting confused. So this should be kilometers, okay? Okay, so, and then there's a thousand meters in one kilometer. Good. So, I'm just gonna fill these gates. So now I have what I want on the top. Uh, so now, So we can go, I can show you exactly how to do that. That's a good question because you'll be doing tons of those uh, this course. Let's just make sure all our numbers are right before we start plugging in. 65 miles per hour, one per mile. This tells you how many uh, meters in a kilometer. Uh, and it's always a good idea to show how the units are canceled. Miles cancel, kilometers cancel. Hours cancel over there. Hours cancel. So all you're left with is seconds and meters. Okay, so we got it good. All right, so um, basically every number that's on the top is entered as a multiplication. Every number that's on the bottom is entered as a division, and you can ignore the ones. So we'll go through that step by step. Let's start by tightening in 65. We don't need any parentheses. Now we have, yeah, and we'll do this all in one swoop without hitting enter, times 1,000. Good. Now I press enter. Right? Now we, we don't need to do that, so let's uh, get into the habit of doing it in one swoop. Oh, no. No, okay, good. And now you have divided by? But don't I need to do 60 times 60 then? Uh, let's see. So we'll do divided by 60. And let me show you what to do here now. This number is on the bottom, so it's introduced just with another division, not with a multiplication. Every number that's on top, you just enter into the calculator as a multiplication. And every number that's on the bottom, you enter into the calculator as a division. Uh, and that will always give you the right answer. Um, yeah. So this is 65 times 1.609 times 1,000 divided by 60 divided by 60. All right. You got 29.06. That's right. That's right, and you'll be doing a lot of those, so it's good to be comfortable with how you can do those on one step on your calculator. It's good to do those in one step on your calculator because then it's easier to check if you've made a mistake for one thing. You can just look at the, the screen and make and you can see if you got any of the numbers wrong. Yeah, so every number that's on top, gets in, it gets introduced by the multiplication sign. Every number that's on the bottom gets introduced by division. And it doesn't matter what the order of these is. If these had happened to be earlier on, they would still be introduced by divisions. And we could still do the whole thing in one swoop. Okay. Um, and that's a, uh, we don't need any parentheses uh, for a problem like this. Uh, and our units that we ended up with were? Meters per second. And I think that's what they got in the book, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, well yeah, actually it looks like you, uh, you were pretty comfortable with that. For example, it's good that you saw how you could do this all as one big string of unit conversions. That's good, and it's good that you saw that we had to convert both the top units and the bottom units. Um, you, they didn't, the inside cover didn't give you exactly the unit that you needed, but that's okay because you used the metric prefix to convert here. Okay, well that's the kind of thing you have to be uh, comfortable with. We saw how to, to use the calculator for that. Okay? Okay, all right. Well, like I said, that's one thing that is gonna be important throughout the whole course. 
Um, so now you want to go out and do more unit conversion problems on your own, uh, both in the homework and maybe just more problems from the book. Uh, but now we can go on to talk about the, the one-dimensional motion kinematics. Mm -hmm.